Welcome to a not so sunny Spain. Yes, contrary to popular belief, it does rain in Spain and actually rains quite a bit. We had a really good winter actually, but today is one of those well, just sort of big grey, bleak days. It's a perfect day to do a video. It's actually a brilliant day for a car like this because one of the best things about the Focus RS is this all-wheel drive system and because it, the, it gives you this ability to play with the car in these sorts of conditions really sort of safely and have a huge amount of fun. <laughs> Just a bit of power but it's very controlled. A bit of understeer. Let's just go back up this hill. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what makes this car so special, right? A bit of wet, wet weather. Look at the grip. It, <laughs> the grip it has on a wet road is just phenomenal. Look, third gear drift. <laughs> this is brilliant. just end up driving like a hooligan. I know I mentioned in my last video that I'd sold a car and it wasn't this one, obviously. I'm not sure when I'm going to sell this car. I mean, there really just isn't anything that gets anywhere close to it, but it, and it's just so much fun. And when it, on the rare occasions that it rains here at the moment, because it's just, we've had so little rain this year, I, I just, as soon as I see like a bit of rain, I'm like darting for the RS. It's just such a brilliant car. It's just, the, the, you can just play around with it. It's just a joy. Actual purpose of this video though is to give you a little bit of an update as to where I am with the cars. Somebody walking very slowly. Uh, to give you a bit of an update as to where I am with the cars and what's left and what's coming. So let's start with the Ford, seeing as I'm here. Uh, the Ford has been very well behaved, generally. And I know lots of haters out there they love to go on about the engine and oh, the engine's gonna blow up and it's like yeah whatever uh, engine's fine I've done 68,000 kilometers with the car now and I think I had 22,000 with the old engine so this one is 40 <laughs> 46,000 kilometers with this engine so uh, it's going absolutely fine if there is a bit of a, a problem with the car, it's just, I've still got this rattle from somewhere behind the dashboard, which is doing my nutting. I cannot find what the problem is. So I think in a couple of weeks, I'm just gonna strip the whole dashboard down, take it for a drive, try and find where this bloody rattle is. And um, anyway, that'll bring back some sanity when I'm on motorways particularly. And the other problem I've got really with the car at the moment is still this steering wheel. It is, the leather is really bad now. It's just falling apart more and more and I hate it. Um, I'm just in two minds as to what to do. So I was gonna go to Ford and complain again and say, look, you really need to sort my steering wheel out. This is not normal behavior for a steering wheel. If not, then I think I'm just gonna replace it. I did a video a while ago about replacing it, the one with those lights at the top, which I still quite like actually. The car itself, absolutely love it. So yeah, I'm really happy with this car. I have no intention of selling it this year at all. Um, it's gonna stay I'm sort of waiting for the new RS to come out. It's, I think it'll probably be a couple of years before it comes out. I can't see myself selling this or something else in the meantime. Although uh, somebody I know who's got a Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio says it's amazing and he was like, you've got to come and test drive it. And I don't want to because I might like it too much. Um, so I, I, probably won't, I probably won't drive it. Okay, let's move on to some good news. My Jimny has arrived. <laughs> out completely out of the blue last month i went to the suzuki garage and i said any idea when the car will come you know any idea at all and he was like no on the system they don't even have a build date let alone a delivery date so i was like bloody hell there's such, he said there's such a demand we have no idea when we're going to get the cars no idea at all so like, really it just sounds odd that they have no idea at all when something's going to be made if there's an order in the system anyway last friday i happened to just be going past the suzuki garage i thought well i'll drop in again i'll go and see what he says because last time he told me it may take maybe a year maybe even more who knows and i was like so i resigned myself to wait until the end of this year maybe before the car turned up 
and I nipped in there the other day and he was like, oh, I've got some good news for you. And I was like, oh, good. It was my birthday. It was my birthday last Friday. And uh, he said, come, come, come. And he took me around the corner and in this like little garage thing they've got, the car was there. It was like, geez, didn't you know it was coming? And he was like, I had no idea. It just arrived yesterday. I was going to call you today, uh, but I had no idea it was coming. So, yeah. So these things just happen in Spain, I don't know. How do they not know that there's a car on its way that they've ordered? Anyway, the fact that it got made, got made in Japan, was shipped all the way here, right, and it had, he had no idea at all. There's nothing on his system either. I'm picking that up in about a week's time. So it's just got me registered. I've ordered a couple of things to be fitted to the car. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll get those fitted before I pick it up as well. But I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited about the gym menu. <laughs> I think the first time I saw the, the they had these like um, what are they called? You know those photos that people do. <laughs> photos. What are they called? <laughs> people take photo hidden photos. Spy shots. Spy shots. No. I remember last year when I first saw some spy shots of the Jimny, and it was like instant love. I just fell in love with the car. I was like, wow, have they done an amazing job just with the design of the car. And I think everybody's agreed about that. Everyone just says it's, it just looks so cool and cute. And um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I think I want one of it. <laughs> so, no reviews yet or anything. It was desperate for information to come out. I haven't been that excited about a new car since the RS came out. That is the God's honest truth. I haven't. I never bother to watch videos about the cars. I really don't. But when the, I have watched every video going, I've read every article, every review, everything about the Jimny. I'm just obsessed with it. And I think it's just, I, I will do a, a, obviously a video with the car when I get it, but it's just, I love the brands. I love Suzuki and the Jimny and the whole concept. And that it's like this four by four. It's a very rugged car. It's not just a, it's not just one of these jacked up cars. It is actually a real four by four. And although it's not cheap, it is cheap for a 4x4. Anyway, so that's coming and I'm so excited. I really am so excited, I cannot wait. But to make way for the chimney, something had to go. And it was the Alpha. I'm sad to say, I know there's a lot of people watch this channel, they like the Alpha, they love the Alpha. The Alpha 156 had to go. Um, it was starting to cost me a lot of money to keep it on the road because I just don't have the time to fix it myself. So I was having to pay the Fiat dealer to sort out a lot of stuff and I just paid a lot of money to get it through its annual inspection. And I just put the order in for the Jimny and I thought, well, I can't, I can't justify having so many cars. So I had to get, it was like, you know, one in, one out type of thing. And I had to get rid of, I had to get rid of the Alpha. The only problem is I didn't do like a last video with it because it sold immediately. I literally put it online one evening thinking, you know, it could take months to sell or something because it's a V6, it's, you know, it's quite a thirsty car. They're not popular in Spain. Thirsty cars are definitely not popular in Spain, especially not down here in Andalusia. I, I literally posted it on a couple of classified websites. I was inundated with phone calls. I mean, just inundated. Emails, phone calls, and I was like, I didn't know who to sell it to. And everyone was like, look, I'm coming down from Madrid. To get here from Madrid, you either have to fly, get a fast train, or get someone to give you a lift. <laughs> and it's a six or seven hour drive. You know, you really want a car if you want to, you're prepared to go that far to get it. Uh, which I was really surprised at. I mean, yeah, it's a, it was a amazing sounding car, but it, and I was very honest in the advert. I said these are quite a lot of work and stuff. It's still the bodywork is bad, and you know it's been neglected. I've spent a lot of money on it, but it still needs it, it still needs some more TLC. Um, so I ended up it sold within a day. Literally, I put it up. The next day, I was like, somebody was like, look, I'll be there tomorrow, I'm paying cash, you know, pick it up. <laughs> so I was like, okay. He turned up the next day, didn't even drive it, gave me the money, we signed some papers, and off he went. Um, didn't even test drive or anything. And it just went so fast, I didn't even have time to do a goodbye video. Because uh, I do actually miss the Alpha. It was a bit of a love-hate relationship. And, but it's gone unlikely to come back. Ferrari wise, yeah the Ferrari's still there. Um, I haven't taken it out today because it's a wet day and, I, and just the other day is the first time 
in about three years. I actually gave it everything and clean. And I was like, there's no way of taking it out today. It's going to be filthy after this rain. So, um, and it's not, it's not really an enjoyable day for it. I like it when the sun's out. I put the hood, yeah, close, open the hood, uh, close, open the hood. The Ferrari's been okay. Ish. <laughs> in the sense that it hasn't broken down or anything. We still have, I, I mentioned you know, quite a few months ago that I was having a bit of a problem with under acceleration and backing off on the throttle. Um, I was getting a bit of a smell of petrol. Uh, only you can only smell it when the hood is open. So I don't know if whatever problem is on my car, somebody with a coupe version would never smell it. Because when I have the hood closed, I don't smell it at all. But when I have the hood open, I can smell it, and it, it's quite strong. And we did some changes. We changed some fuel valves. We've done quite a few things, and it seemed to make it better. Uh, but I think it's sort of back. It's not great. It has to go back. So it's going in anyway, end of this month for a service. And I was like, look, don't give it back to me until we're really confident that whatever, wherever that smell is coming from, it needs to be sorted. Because it just worries me every time I take it out. I'm like, is it going to catch fire? I've seen the videos on YouTube. I know it happens. And the other thing is, is that um, the car is slightly unlevel at the moment. So one side is slightly lower than the other. And I noticed it. We noticed it when we jacked the car up because the car was very low on its uh, uh, set uh, suspension settings, and we just raised it a little bit. And as we raised it, we realised that the shock up, one of the shock absorbers, is starting to go. So I was like, well, how much are two shock absorbers? Because we've got to change, obviously, two. How much are two shock absorbers for a Ferrari 360? 3,000 euros. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Three grand for two shock absorbers. I said, do you know what? It's probably been like that for quite a while. And I hadn't had even noticed. And it's probably going to be okay for a little bit longer. So there's no way I'm paying three grand at the moment. Uh, we're buying a new car and having to service the Ferrari. Um, the, the shock absorber can wait. It's, it's not failing badly. It's just failed. You know, it's just gone a little bit down. But it's okay for now. Um, but apart from that, it's absolutely fine. So yeah, it's a bit wonky and it stinks of fuel. But apart from that, it's absolutely great. I uh, love that car. Have been toying with changing it for a 430, even a 458, but a 458 is quite a stretch financially, so that's probably not never going to happen. <laughs> Definitely not this year anyway. And a 430 is possible. Uh, there's, a, there's not that much of a jump from a 360 to a 430, so it is possible to do. Um, I have to borrow some money again, as you do, but it is possible. And I am sort of tempted to do I'm nearly at 80,000 kilometres on the Ferrari, so I uh, don't want to take it too high, only because the value, might, it might affect the value later. And I don't really care about the value, but I only care about the value because I'll have to trade it in at some point to trade it up to something else, so anyway. As some of you know, I, I had a boat for a while. I bought a boat early last year, um, and that had to go as well. I, I got rid of it, um, end, of last, end of 2018. Really because they've become illegal in Spain, or they're becoming illegal as of April, because my, my boat, it's a black rib with a 300 outboard engine, 300 horsepower outboard. And black ribs are notoriously used all the time for drug smuggling and people smuggling. And although I'm not a smuggler, or as we will think I'm a smuggler, because they wonder where I get my money from, because I seem to be at home all the time. <laughs> working. I am working. <laughs> Just that I work at home in my office there. So, um, but although people thought I was a drug smuggler, I'm not a drug smuggler. Uh, but the boat looked like a drug smuggling boat. So I have to say, I had to send it back to England uh, because it's very difficult to keep it now. Uh, which is a shame. I did enjoy it, but uh, it's also very expensive to maintain. The mooring is expensive, the servicing, the anti-fouling, the fuel. It's a very expensive toy to have. So in a way, I'm glad it's gone because it was very cost me quite a lot of money. Um, so it's a bit of a cost saving, which is good. And uh, although I do miss it. And finally, uh, the scooter. I've got a scooter that I use. I just use it to go to back and forth to, to my office from my house, and also just you know just potter around the area. And I had a Kimco at the Taiwanese brand, which is very popular here in Spain. And I changed it for a Honda PCX, and they are night and day. It really is night and day. The cost of the bike is the same as two shock absorbers for a Ferrari. Um, a lovely bike, really nice. 
It'll top out at about 105 kilometers an hour. The Kimco was doing about 85, 90. And I always felt a bit vulnerable on sort of these dual carriageways because you, you can't overtake anything and you're always a bit, you can't just speed up to get past something. You know, you're always a bit vulnerable when, when you're at the speed limit and you can't go any faster. So, um, so it had to go. And, I, and the Honda is just a brilliant machine. It really is, love it. So that's it. Um, am I going to buy anything else this year? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I'm always looking on classifieds. There's something in particular I keep looking at. Uh, it's very, it's very expensive, but it's come down in value so much that it's sort of hit the rock bottom. Which is what I did with the Ferrari. I sort of bought it, bought it at that sort of bottom price where I knew it couldn't go down anymore could only go up or stay at that price so you can sort of enjoy it in a way for free because you're not going to lose any money on it but there is a car that I've wanted for a long time and anyway I'm not going to say anything else because I, I keep looking and there, there is an opportunity at the moment but it's still expensive oh old Jimmy I've arrived at my destination I'm just going to buy a track seat because I want to look like a chav driving a Focus RS. Uh, not really, obviously. <laughs> but, um, it's just because I play tennis and I go on my motorbike in the mornings to tennis and uh, it's freezing in shorts. I need to, I need to, a, a track seat. Anyway, completely pointless conversation. I've really spoken for a long time. This may be a very long video. Anyway, um, hope you're all well. I will do a video shortly. I've got a video that I'm doing next week. I'm definitely going to do a video. I am, um, I've, I, in my head, I've made a commitment to try and do a video a week, um, only just to try and get back into the rhythm. As soon as you get out of, out of the habit of doing videos, it's really hard to get back into it. So only, so I'm going to try and just do one a week, just for now, just to make sure that at least there is some regular content on my channel. Otherwise people might abandon it and never look at me again. Just be really sad anyway right on that note have a great day safe driving catch you very soon bye